So before we talk about enclomiphene, let's talk about sort of the, the etiology of low testosterone. Um, so the research has suggested that testosterone has declined about 50% in the last 50 years. Uh, sperm count also has declined about 50% in the last 50 years. So it seems to be this huge generational decline. Forbes wrote a great article about it called You're Not the Man Your Father Was as a result of this, which is really, uh, you know. Which of course dad would agree with, right? Yeah, <laughs> that's right. Um, so what do you think is responsible for, for the decline in testosterone and fertility? Well, from what I've seen, it's different than some of the studies I've read. And don't ask me how they actually uh, weigh testicles at birth. But from what I've understood per the studies, the actual uh, testicular weight at birth has declined over the last 50 years. The theory there was that uh, certain what we call xenoestrogens, things that look like estrogen in the environment, have... Uh, made for a decreased production of, of estrogen, sorry, a decreased production of testosterone. Mm -hmm. And whether this is affecting uh, mom or the child himself mm -hmm. is, is unclear. But in what I've seen yeah. in my generation is stress. Yeah, Stress kills. 300 years ago, our ancestors were herding sheep. Mm. And you would have a brief run of adrenaline if a wolf came by or an opposing mm -hmm. tribe, but it wasn't every day constant. And we've not, without going too far afield, this is more your area sure. of expertise, obviously, but chronic stress is yeah. just, it's a hammer to the body. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the, 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 the simple version is the fight or flight mode is very different than the, the parasympathetic mode that, that where we're going to be thinking about reproducing and, um, you know, repairing the digestive tract. Right. And, and, and the theory goes that if you're constantly in that mode, mm -hmm. well, then you're not going to be producing much testosterone. Right. And contrary to popular belief, testosterone is not, your, not what you produce when you're threatened. Yeah. It's the preparation for. Mm -hmm. So you grow that muscle so you're ready when you're threatened. But cortisol and adrenaline and noradrenaline are what's produced when you're threatened. And when those are, are prevalent 24-7, you know, again, this is my experience yeah. with, with, with clinical uh, uh, visits of patients for however many years now, uh, it just, it, it buries your testosterone. And I've seen some, I mean, we joke, okay, well, you have a couple options here. You can move to Bali and become a beach boy, <laughs> right? And, and, uh, reduce all your stress, which isn't an option for most individuals. Uh, but there are oftentimes ways that we can reduce stress. Something simple like, mm -hmm. and, and we're probably going to segue into this anyway, but I'll, I'll, I'll jump ahead. Getting better sleep. Mm-hmm. And not just quantity, but quality. A lot of people, especially people that are overweight, suffer from sleep apnea. Right. Um, so little things like that. It's not a little thing. But things that we tend to take for granted. If we adjust those, we can reduce the stress enough to bring testosterone levels back up. And one of the things that people often mistake too is, well, shouldn't I be working out? Because that's going to be the answer. That, mm -hmm. That's going to create more testosterone. Yeah. Generally speaking, exercise is considered beneficial stress, U stress, we call right. it, right? But when you're working for UPS mm -hmm. in the, the, the high season and you're pulling 16, 18 hour days mm -hmm. and you're physically, right? When I say working for UPS, yeah. I mean running a truck. Right. And then you decide to go to the gym, yeah. you've just piled on to that bad stress at that point with something that would normally be considered good stress. So sure. uh, I'm just trying to help smooth this out for people that are thinking this through uh, because we see this a lot, right, in practice where, where people take what's normally considered good device, a good advice, and it, it gets um, mistaken, I guess, or misinterpreted. Uh, but bottom line is stress can really affect mm -hmm. the, the body's production of just about anything it's supposed to do properly. Yeah, absolutely. And we talk about this in psychology all the time. Acute stress is not necessarily harmful, but chronic stress can be catabolic, right? And it antagonizes sort of the, uh, the benefits of testosterone. So this is a huge point in terms of like, you know, stress reduction is obviously beneficial for not only holistic health, but hormonal health as well. Um, you also mentioned the xenoestrogens. Is there anything that we can do about that? Obviously, we're kind of bombarded with plastics in our environment. Yeah, that's a tough one because we found, I mean, last time I looked into it, we had uh, literally hundreds of, uh, of actually naturally occurring estrogens mm -hmm. that we've identified none that are naturally occurring testosterone mm. analogs, right? Yeah, and that's interesting because, uh, you know, these are all steroids to which we're referring mm -hmm. because they come from cholesterol, right? right? So the cascade that begins with cholesterol 
in general categories, progesterone, excuse me, uh, pregnenolone, DHEA, progesterone, testosterone, estrogen. The end of the line is estrogen, mm-hmm. yeah. not any of these others. So it's interesting that the end of the line, you know, you could interpret that as, you know, the, the universe has us uh, eventually becoming more, we'll call it female or yeah. estrogenized or whatever you want to call it. Um, quite naturally, I don't know. But the, the only way I know of that you can defend against estrogen in any form, xenoestrogens, meaning, you know, things that are chemically similar and act mm-hmm. the same way, is to block the receptor, mm-hmm. uh, which goes back to, you know, in clomiphene, that's, right. that's what it does. Um, so I'll, I'll stop there because I, you probably want to load that, that question for a different um, uh, for sure. time. But uh, that's the only thing I know of. And of course, you know, there are, there are things you can do, meaning be aware mm-hmm. of what products may contain xenoestrogens mm-hmm. and avoid those. Right. Don't cook with, um, uh, what is it, certain plastics yeah, that can leach that. Yeah, so, so those things, you know, you can look into as well to try and protect yourself. Absolutely.